Alta moved through the adventurous hall. It was filled with a range of individuals. Unscrupulous rogues and noble paladins sat at the same table, sharing a drink, each a veteran of danger. Risk and reward doled out to all. Amongst them were several bards. This random band played for the amusements of the warriors and mages alike. A cleric bobbed his head at the tune. Even the waitress stopped to listen, while the bowl of stew in her hand cooled off. Alto took a seat and listened to them. Their tune soothed his tired body after being on the road all day long. He let his eyelids droop down as he savored the talent of the others. His fingers itched for the feel of his loot, but he held still. It would be rude to interrupt their performance. Welcome back to Mythical Philology Adventures. I'm your guide, Jason. Today, we turn from our usual menagerie of beasts of legends and look at those that face them. Let's take a look at the entertaining and musical bard, which many parties have picked up. Let's see if they are truly an asset on a dangerous adventure. The bar dates back ages long before the time of nights, older still, all the way back to the earliest of civilizations of Uruk, when they told of the oldest stories, including Gilgamesh and Inkadu. Yet, we know they are older still. In before history was written, there was music and stories with them. They were precursors to the bards. The term bard comes from Celtic cultures, yet other terms have been used throughout the ages. They are poets. Many were employed by lords to entertain at dinners with diplomats, at important weddings and festivals. They would perform embellished stories of their lords' deeds to entice and impress the locals. Or they may create slanderous songs that would embarrass and harass their opposition. Yet there is more. Smaller, lesser known ones would travel between towns and earn coins and meals for performances. They would bring news of the happenings elsewhere. They now include minstrels, performers, troubadours, and authors among their ranks. In time, they have gained a new profession in the field of fantasy games. They have become a class of adventurer, such as yourself. They are individuals who use song and words to weave spells, illusions, deception, and encouragement. They aren't like those arcane mages and sorcerers who rain paltry fire around which burns down villages and spreads fear. No, 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 no. There's something more refined and classier. So, let's take a look at what spells and abilities their bard would truly have in a fantasy world. Let's begin with how their magic works. They sing and play instruments. So, we need to figure out what influences music can have on a person and there is no end to the amount of research on this very topic. Music is very beneficial to the brain and can rewire it. Music can promote healing and relaxation. Many use it for meditation. Or you have been in a lecture where the professor's tone droned on and on and on until you fell asleep. I'm betting a few have a workout mix you put on when you hit the gym or a good song that gets you moving and grooving for a dance. All of this is the well-documented influences of music on a person in the real world, all without the addition of magic. So, with magic, it wouldn't be too far-fetched that a bard would have the ability to buff fighting abilities of their party, even push them past where they should fall from exhaustion by using an upbeat song. They can cause fatigue and sleep using a nice, slow melody. Now, normal music only heals stress and fatigue from the body. But what about healing wounds? Well, most research shows it is more mental and no physical effects noticed and has no effect on serious injuries. So, to get music to heal, it will need to be magic, like the magic used by a cleric or druid. Potentially possible, but questionable, depends on the rules of magic. Auditory hallucinations are another thing which could work here. I did a more detailed video before on illusion magic, 
but I'll go over the important parts here. The auditory system is tied to the organs for balance. So, sound-based magic could cause dizziness, vertigo, and disorientation. Definitely useful on a foe. A subtle sound or ventriloquism could be used to trick a foe in a more subtle way and to lead them astray, away from the party or into a trap. This is a small inflection of the voice and a skill that would be easy to learn for a performer and then amplify it with magic. They say that music soothes the savage beast. In theory, a bard could use their magic to calm dangerous monsters or get it riled up in attacking foes. That and other variations of charming people and animals. Can sound hurt? Cause pain? Kill? Yes. Sounds between 2000 and 4000 hertz, such as nails on a chalkboard, can be unpleasant. You can have hearing loss from the sound of a jet engine or a gun fired too close to the ear. At 150 decibels, sounds can burst eardrums, and at 185 decibels, can affect your inner organs. To instantly kill with a sound, that would be about 240 decibels. Now, this isn't a linear increase, but an exponential one. An increase of 10 numbers is actually 100 times greater. So, getting sounds to be fatal would be an omnidirectional attack deadly to the user and the party as well as the foes, but could be focused with magic. So, we have illusions for crowd control, buffs for the party, and debuffs for the foe, some healing, and the ability to inflict damage. This is a nice range of abilities based on sound-based attacks, in theory. But what else can they do? Well, we all love a little vicious mockery. Use it to taunt a foe into attacking and making a mistake in their reckless charge. The perfect way to leave them open for your counter. Now, if we go back to the bard's original role, that is where they become really valuable. The bard can do performances when you reach a new town or inn and make some coin. With enough work, you could land as an entertainer at a noble banquet. A great way to do espionage, assassination, and theft if that is your line of work. You could also use it as a way to get your foot in as a bodyguard. Now, if our bard does performances, acrobatics wouldn't be a bad skill to have. This means good dodging abilities. You could weave it into a dance to help distract your foe. And that brings up another skill. If they've got a partner, a thief, they can use that as an opening for some pickpocketing. You distract, and they steal. Since bards talk for a living, them learning to read and write ancient languages in foreign tongues would be critical skills for them. How else would you reach such a wide audience? Now, what weapons would a bard use? Well, we have two in this category. The more traditional ones, like swords, maces, axes, bows, crossbows, and the sword. Any fool could pick them up and use them. Maybe not as masterfully as a warrior, but still dangerous. Yet, not one of those would work to allow the bard to work their magic. That, they will need an instrument. So, what should they carry into battle? Let's start by removing huge ones, like pianos, organs, harps, and probably a cello or bass. Those are usually played sitting down for obvious reasons. So, we need something portable, easily carried. I'd probably remove things like a trombone or tuba due to their size, maybe a French horn. Yes, they can be played in a marching band, but difficult to maneuver in a dungeon hall. A lute, violin, guitar, a flute, a clarinet, a trumpet, some drums. All of those could be used, but require two hands. With one hand, you could play a tambourine or a harmonica. Either could work, but there are issues, namely playing while dodging attacks. Unless you've got a top tier tank which can keep your foes distracted, then something is coming for you. The bard will need to dodge blades, arrows, and spells, always while playing and dancing. 
That won't be easy when your hands are holding an instrument and playing them. That is why I'd want a weapon in a hand. In theory, symbols could be used as a shield and an instrument at once, but could you weave an opponent's attacks into your song? A drum could be used in a similar way, or you could hang it on your hip to beat with one hand as you move about. But what if there was an instrument that didn't use your hands? I've got two. The first is much more obvious. Your voice. Song and words. First tools of a bard of the Stone Age. It's still around. Speak and sing as you fight. That way, you can hold a shield to protect yourself. But could you make your shield a tambourine? Yes, I think you could. But there is another instrument, tap dancing. By adding a small plate to the bottom of your boots, you may be able to create the rhythm for a bard's spells by dancing in battle. Sword fighting is a lot of footwork, or dancing for a bard. There is a question with bards. Is there an effect to having multiple working in chorus? Could their magic be stronger in a group? Or would they be able to perform more elaborate spells? Such as the difference between a solo performance and the band, which is more powerful. In this one, I think excitatory songs are stronger in an orchestra, but soothing and calming ones work better as a solo. Though, this could change with songs and skills. There is a problem here. If one person is off key or out of time, it could throw off the whole song, and thus render the borrowed spell completely pointless. Just noise. And could that bring forth a bard's biggest weakness? If you can mess up their song, the spell is ruined. If you have two bards in a duel, could they turn each other's songs back on each other? Rework the melody into something different and unexpected. This would take quick reflexes and thinking to achieve a fight for your life. But just disrupting would be easier. Even a non-bard could achieve that. If they sing, belt out your own incorrect lyrics as off-key as possible. If they are on the lute or horn, try a different instrument. Even if you can't play correctly, you could make enough noise to ruin their performance. So, why would a bard choose to become an adventurer? Why would a singer put their lives in constant danger? Well, they need material for their stories. And what is a better source than to talk about the very things that you have lived through? Talk about fighting a dragon by hoisting its head up high to draw attention. Not to mention, fame and glory from such feats could easily draw attention. How many would love to see a party member who defeated the Dark Lord and saved the world? Just look at how many people flock to see celebrities. Yeah, a bard could use such an event to make more money than they would off of any loot they pull out of a dungeon. Now, be careful adding a bard to your party. They are known to have a silver tongue, but that tongue can be venomous as well. More chaotic bards may spread rumors and disrupt your party's cohesion, create conflict and strife, ultimately, tear you all apart merely for fun. Yes, I've met people like that. Never fun to be around. We left them tied up to a tree in front of a basilisk before our party broke apart. That was also after he tried to seduce everything, be it a succubus, a married queen, or a dragon. Yeah, he got us into a lot of trouble. But also sweet talked to God until we got out of being arrested. And talked to Merchant into giving us some free stuff. That was nice. Alto took the stage and began to play. Every ear turned towards him as they closed their eyes. It was slow and calming a tune that everyone knew, but couldn't place. When he finished, the tavern was filled with applause and cheers, save from the other bards. 
They waved Alta over, and one of them spoke up. That was beautiful, but empty. I know, Alta admitted. It has always been that way. I'm looking for inspiration. Looking for a party. I'm sure some here would like you to join up. I don't know. Maybe. But I've got business elsewhere first. Bard has the potential to be an interesting class. Wouldn't you say? Have any of you tested the Bardic Arts? How did it go for your party? It must have gone somewhat well, if you are still alive. Thank you for watching, adventurers. Please return next week, where we shall return to our usual sorts of monsters with the Sphinx. Until then, I'll see you on the roads.